you might recognize this famous piece, a prelude in C major by Johann Sebastian Bach. It's from the first of two collections of preludes and fugues called the Well-Tempered Clavier. But did you know that they were pivotal in standardizing the tuning system we use today? We take it for granted today that it would be possible to play this piece in a different key, to transpose it to E flat or A. It would sound different, but it wouldn't sound out of tune. Ironically, that's because on a modern piano, most of the notes actually are slightly out of tune. The sound of a note is a vibration at a particular frequency. If you double that frequency, a perfect two to one ratio, it makes a sound an octave higher. A ratio of three to two gives you an interval that's called a perfect fifth. The problem is, on a keyboard instrument, if you get all the octaves perfectly mathematically in tune, it pushes the fifths noticeably out of tune, and vice versa. It was popular in Bach's day to choose a tuning that would sound best in one particular key and its close harmonic neighbors. because more distant harmonies could sound like this. To play works in all of the major and minor keys, there would have to be a compromise. To allow a half step, the distance from one note to the next on a keyboard, to sound like a half step consistently, the other intervals within an octave can no longer be mathematically perfect. Our ears have gotten so used to equal temperament on a modern piano that we hear it as being in tune even without those pure intervals. But what that compromise allows, that sacrifice of perfection, can be seen in Bach's well-tempered clavier. To be able to not only play a series of pieces in different keys and have them all sound in tune, but to be able to explore harmonies that are farther afield within one piece. The two volumes Bach wrote each go through all 24 of the major and minor keys from C major to B minor with a prelude followed by a fugue. As the title page says, it was written to teach players technique. For the benefit and use of musical youth eager to learn and also for the special pastime of those who are already skilled in this study. The preludes don't adhere to any strict rules. They can sound spontaneous, setting the harmonic stage, allowing the performer to warm up their fingers and their brains. The fugues, mostly in three or four voices, although there's one for two voices and a couple for five, are much more tightly structured. The parts enter in turns in a predictable way. Some of the melodic lines can even be flipped upside down or played backwards and still make musical sense. Bach was an expert at finding the contrapuntal potential hidden in any theme or musical subject. Of the many works inspired by the Well-Tempered Clavier, there's the Opus 28 set of preludes by Frederick Chopin, which has one for each major and minor key. Paul Hindemith wrote Ludus Tonalis for the piano, alternating fugues with interludes, and Dmitry Shostakovich wrote a set of 24 preludes and fugues for piano in the early 1950s. The two books of the Well-Tempered Clavier remain enormously influential. It's a guide for students of composition in the ways of harmony and counterpoint, and for keyboard players, it's a roadmap as they become familiar with all the major and minor keys. They can be played in full across one or two concert performances, a truly monumental feat. But even the familiar opening C major prelude is deceptive in its simplicity. Pianist Jeremy Denk wrote, it's amazing how variable performances of this icon can be. You have to ask yourself how much personal expression to put in and how much to let the notes speak for themselves. The piece becomes a litmus test, a rite of passage, 